Hi, my name is Kara. This is my weight loss vlog. And today is a how-to vlog too. It's a bonus. Um, this week I lost one pound, so I lost nine pounds total. Not on this vlog, but nine pounds from the fattest. And today I'm going to teach you how to knit a scarf on your hand. This is one that my daughter did. She did it in a, an activity day for church. It's very long. But I'm just going to do it with one kind of yarn. See, she did it with three. But I'll do this really quick. And I'm going to knit while I speak. Um, you make a little slip knot, and you put it on your thumb, then you take the rest of the yarn and you're going to loop it around your fingers, like this. You're going to make two passes around your fingers. Oops. Then you're going to take the bottom one and slip it up over the top and slip it off, like that. So see, there's the first round. Now I'm going to push them all down, and I'm starting at this end and then go back around. And then I slip it over the top again. So I'm gonna knit as I talk. Okay, so I lost a pound and we had a really great Thanksgiving. That was really fun. Got to see all my brothers and sisters. They all came to my mom's house for Thanksgiving. And my brother had lost 20 pounds in the last few weeks. Just like, I think two weeks or so. And he's kind of a big guy. He's tall, he's about six foot tall. And I think he was probably about 240 pounds or so, but now he's about down to 220. And what he did was he gave up Mountain Dew. He works in construction, he works long, hard hours, and um, he drinks that Mountain Dew kind of to give him some energy to get through his day, but he gave up Mountain Dew, which he actually does every winter. But he said he's given it up for good this time, so we'll see. And um, he quit going to Burger King, because a lot of times he'd stop at Burger King on his way home before he got home from work and he um, quit eating treats when he stops to get gas. Because a lot of times he'd go in and pay for his gas and he'd also pick up whatever. I don't know what he'd eat, a corn dog or something. Anyway, so he quit doing that too. So I am really proud of him and I hope that I and my sisters can all strive to be like him because he's our favorite brother. His, he's our only brother, technically. Anyway, so, um, fun Thanksgiving, lots of good food, and I try to be really careful and just eat slowly and eat what I should and um, try to be careful on the desserts. Anyway, and we got some little bit of shopping in. I know my brother and sisters did a lot more Black Friday shopping than I did. I just did a little bit of Thanksgiving night shopping. But anyway, okay, so a couple of weeks ago I talked about my timeline. Look, my scarf is already this long. And um, see, it looks like it's knitted on this side. Um, anyway, I talked about my timeline and just the different things in my life that I think had... I don't know. I mean, I can't. you can't blame your weight gain on all the hard things that you deal with in your life, but they don't help. Let's just say that. So, 1999, we talked about that. My parents got divorced. We um, graduated from school, moved back home to the farm, and had a baby. So, let's see. I actually wrote this down so I could... Um, keep track. Um, in 2000, my dad got remarried. That was a trial in itself because we were all really disappointed. We felt like we didn't, he didn't know her very well. We didn't know her at all. Um, he called me up on my birthday and said, hey, happy birthday. I'm getting married tomorrow. That was what happened. Okay, so there was that. That was lovely. Um, and let's see. In 2001, my husband and I lost a baby. I miscarried a baby at 12 weeks. That was very horrible, very awful. Um, in 2002, though, I was able to carry our little boy full term, so that was good. And I think in 2002, my dad got divorced from that wife. As I say this really fast, it's going to sound a lot more horrible than it actually was living it. Maybe not, I don't know. <laughs> but when you say it you know, really fast, it sounds like a soap opera. So let's see. In 2003, I think, my dad got married to another lady. And in 2004, my brother-in-law died. He was killed in an accident. He was out um, snowmobiling with some friends at a scout activity, and he actually got run over by a snowmobile while he was um, sledding behind a four-wheeler snowmobile, something, I'm not quite sure. But that was traumatic and horrible. Let's see, <laughs> I'm doing this very mad factly um, That year, I also got a job at this college that's close to our home, and so I would actually drag my two little kids 
over and my sister-in-law would watch them while I was teaching my class and that was stressful. The driving, the teaching, the getting ready, the feeling like I didn't actually know what I was doing. It was an accounting class but it was really fun. It was a really good experience. It actually taught me that that's not what I want to do with my life because um, my husband can provide for us and so I'm just very happy now and to stay home with my kids and I think that's what it took was was um, me having that job so I know I know I'm not making very good eye contact while I do this I'm sorry okay we also had a big fire that year um, one of our straw stacks started on fire it wasn't actually my husband and mine it was um, my in-laws but it was up at the dairy where we used to live so that was scary and horrible so let's see that was 2004 in 2005 my husband and I decided we wanted to have our third baby and um, so we tried for that but we didn't have any luck that year at all. And um, finally I went in in October or November of that year to my doctor and I said, hey, what's going on? And they said, well, let's do a test for you. You know, if you've been trying to have a baby for a year and you haven't been able to, that's pretty big deal. So we're going to do some tests. And um, so they did the insulin resistance test. And I was indeed insulin resistant and severely insulin resistant too. And I'll probably talk a little bit more about insulin resistance in future vlogs. But, what else? Um, so they did that test and I got on, um, they call it metformin. It's a drug to help you with insulin resistance. And so that was good and I became pregnant. But then we lost that baby in 2006. And then I got pregnant right away again. And at that, that was 12 weeks. And we lost that baby and I was 22 weeks at that time. And um, at least in my situation, when I lost the babies at 12 weeks, they would do what they call a DNC, which I'm not even sure what it stands for, dilation and curtage, I think, or something. Anyway, something like that. And so you just go in and they basically dilate you and remove the baby, the fetus. But um, So that was bad. But when you're 22 weeks, you have to actually be put into labor and deliver that baby. And that was horrible. That was hard. I won't kid you. It was really awful. Um, we were still looking forward to that little baby. It was tough on my other kids. I'll show you my picture. This isn't actually of the baby, but it's um, the, the little casket. We had him buried, you know, just as you would a full-term baby, even though he was only five months you know, and gave him a name and just did all that we could to honor his little memory. And so I'm the proud over owner of a couple of cemetery plots, actually four, I think, down at our local cemetery. So we thought we'd get a couple while we were at it. You might think to yourself, how can you say, how can you talk about this without just losing it, you know, bursting into tears? But it, I've done it a lot, and the more... I talk about it the better it gets the easier it it becomes to deal with it and something like this you never get over but I think it becomes easier to deal with with time and with talking about it and I've cried buckets of tears over each one of these things on my list because they've each been just so hard and everybody has hard things we know that's true um let's see also that year that we lost the baby my dad and his wife had a baby so that was kind of, you know, insult to injury. But his wife had not had any kids before, and I, you know, can't begrudge her that, because I, I believe that anybody that has that righteous desire to be a mother, you know, somehow, whatever it takes, if it's adoption or being a foster mom or whatever, you know, and I, I'm glad that she was able to find a nice guy to, to be the dad of her kids. Anyway, so let's see, what's next? <laughs> 2007 we had another fire this time it was the um, straw dust straw dust sawdust da um, pile they um, spread sawdust in with the cows so the cows have kind of a soft place to lay down and we think that one of our workers maybe flicked a cigarette butt or something we don't know for sure but that was our 2007 fire um, in 2008 we had our little girl and everything went really well there I did get some high blood pressure there oh that's one thing after we lost our little stillborn baby, I found out that I had high blood pressure. They put me on some medicine for that, and I remember just crying because I thought, I'm not an old lady. 
I shouldn't be on high blood pressure medicine. But anyway, that's something I'm just going to have to work through. And I think losing weight is going to get me off of that. But my little girl was born two weeks early because they were worried about preeclampsia. So that was kind of a trial. She was only 7'3", seven, 7 pounds 3 ounces, which for my kids was scrawny. I remember looking at her thinking, you're like a little half baby. You're so tiny. But anyway, so that was that. Um, 2009, we bought this house that we're in. And we moved out of a single wide trailer into this nice home. It's about, I think it's 1,500 square feet, and it has a basement, and it's on a really deserted road, so it's really great. We don't have any cows up here on the place. We don't have, we just have a dog and a few cats, and sometimes some sheep, but that's really nice, and no neighbors really. We do have a lot of trucks that go by, and it gets really dusty in the summer because it's a gravel road, but anyway, that's what, it was hard to buy this place because the owner, the cellar was kind of difficult to deal with, but we did it and it all worked out in the end. And so we were grateful that we had saved all those years. Those 10 years that we lived in the single wide helped us to buy this place. So let's see, 2010, that's this year. It's been fairly uneventful. Um, my dad and his wife had another baby, they had a little boy. So I have a half sister and a half brother. So I guess if you combine them, it's a whole kid. Just kidding. But anyway, so those are some of the trials of the last 10 years, and through them all, I've been heavy, I've been fat, and I wonder if they would have been easier to deal with. I know I would have had better pregnancies if I would not have been so heavy, and I feel horrible about that, I feel guilty about that, but this is really bizarre, but I feel like those babies have forgiven me, and um, I know that I will raise them again. Because I know that families can be forever. So, anyway. Um, yeah, what, what's next? Here's my scarf. Look how much I've gotten done during this talking. Anyway, so, you know, if you're having weight trouble, let's just get it off. Let's just get rid of it. it it's time. I don't want to be fat anymore. And I don't think you guys do either. You know, if you're watching this and you have a weight problem, just think how much easier and more fun and more fulfilling your life would be if you were at a healthy weight. And these trials in life, that's not why we're heavy, but I don't think that it helps any. You know, because when stressful situations come, I know I, for one, turn to food, to an overeating, to just make myself feel better. It helps me with the anxiety. It helps me with the depression. You know, it's a form of self-medicating. And you know, it's that, or alcohol, or drugs, or or other dangerous behaviors, but anyway, let's all work together, and do what we can. See my scarf? I think I'm actually going to keep this. I was just going to unpick it, but it's kind of cool. Anyway, we'll see. So, go make a little scarf with your gigantic yarn. Talk to you next week. Thanks. Bye.